Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, so this is a um, use case pitch. Uh, so cube case, our APIs are core to IoT and artificial intelligence. Um, first of all, my name is Michele. This is my main account if you want to follow me. Um, I work in Walla. Uh, Walla works in beauty sector. It's founded in uh, 2013, and we build um, B2B and B2C tools um, for uh, companies that work in the beauty. So um, appointments manager, a checkout system, um, tools that help to um, handle orders and warehouse and give uh, reports or uh, make newsletter marketing system. Everything that our customer need uh, in the beauty center. <coughs> this is uh, our team. Uh, this is our uh, Italy team. We are in uh, four countries. Uh, we are in Italy, Spain, Portugal. We, are, uh, um, we acquire Balinea in France and the Funk Martini in Greece. And so we are uh, more than 100 people, just to give you some number. We have more than 9,000 clients, and we handle uh, half a million appointments every month. And appointments, uh, I need uh, someone that book a treatment uh, in, a, in a salon, in a beauty center, in a spa, or making a tattoo, for example. Uh, first problem. Only 6% of these appointments are handled totally online. And with uh, our widget, with our website, with our iOS application, Android application. 94% of the appointments is still taken by a phone call or by person, by the staff member of the salon. Uh, <coughs> so, for this uh, case study, um, we give you, I give you a, a little bit of scenario. This is a typical call, a typical phone call, where the staff member make a lot of questions to identify the customer, to try to understand uh, in which the, the customer is interested in, what kind of treatment. Sometimes you have two customers with the same last name or, uh, and you have to identify it to book the appointment. And this is a very bad user experience. So we try to improve it. Um, first of all, we have to build something that can get the phone number of the caller. And then, once we have the phone number, we have to send it to our backend to identify who is the customer that is calling, looking in our DB. And then, notify back the clients to show the info to the staff member that is answering the phone. Um, how to detect incoming calls? We start from a NanoPi uh, board, is a board uh, similar to Raspberry Pi or Arduino, with a Linux distribution and a Docker install. And we build then a custom module to detect the incoming calls that we plug on the board so we can connect the phone cable. And then it works like a normal telephone, but instead of ringing, it sends the phone number to our backend. Um, thanks to uh, a Docker Swarm cluster, we can update and we can, we can update the, um, the software that runs on this device. The device got the shape of a cube, and so the name cube, <laughs> simply. OK. Uh, now that we have the phone number, the cube make 
an HTTP request to our API server. So we expose uh, a custom endpoint. And then there is a query, a simple query on the customer's table. So we can identify exactly what is the customer. Then we get the historical data about the customers. And with a custom algorithm that is uh, um, based on the, the past appointments on the customer. So we try to guess what treatments the customer can be interested in. Now we have the customers. We have all the info that we need. We have to notify back the clients. And we do this with, uh, uh, through an NQTT channel. So the clients are connected to this channel, listening to every message. Uh, we choose a MQTT broker as a service, that is NQX. Uh, and then we publish. we publish. When we have the data, we publish a message on a specific channel. And then the clients that are connected, um, for example, the web web-based clients are connected through WebSocket, receive the data. And then now we have the data on the clients. So this is the flow. There is an incoming call. This is the calendar view of our, of our so software. Um, basically, there is staff member in the column and the time on the row. And these are all appointments of the customers. It happened then HTTP request uh, to our API server is processed by backend, and then a message is published on the right channel. Then we have to notify the client, so we build a UX UI that works like this. So staff member that answer the phone can, can see who is calling and all the data that he need to better help. Demo? OK. I think this is the first demo in the main auditorium room. I'm happy to introduce it. Uh, Is it duplicating? No? Okay. Okay. The cube have to be connected by a phone cable, so I cannot do this uh, here. But I have a simulator. So this is a, um, a simulator of a telephone call. And it basically, it makes an HTTP request to the same API that the cube calls. This is our software. And for example, we have this customer that execute these treatments in this history. And this is the phone number of this customer. This is our calendar view that we saved before. And then when there is an incoming call, the, the our um, in the top of our tool, it, we can display who is the caller, average budget, the last booking time, the frequency. And then we can better help telling the staff member that is answering who is the favorite staff member of the caller or the favorite treatment of the caller. So when the phone call ends, it closes. OK. Uh. 
Okay, so we can improve the phone calls and the conversation like this, that is really warm instead of uh, telling, uh, asking for the name and the info to the customer that is calling. And so we can be proactive, we can try to guess, and we can, uh, we can have a lot of info that save a lot of time of the people that is calling. Okay, why we choose MQTT? Um, basically for compatibility, we have uh, native application, we have web-based application, MQTT can go over WebSocket, um, but also we can use on our embedded system, embedded board, and so we choose this protocol. But it can be replaced by any kind of a real-time messaging system. Why a custom hardware? Um, we, uh, to detecting the phone number of the caller is something that we can do with uh, a lot of other systems, like uh, voice over IP solutions. But we have to install something to, uh, in the place, in, uh, in the salons of our clients, only to get the number of the customer call. And then we choose to build our own hardware because we wanted that uh, it was easy to implement this solution for the client. So simply connect the phone cable and start listening to the incoming calls. And for, for, um, in our way of thinking, um, the cube is an enabling technology. So thanks to Docker, we can ship the new version of the image that is run on the cube. And so if we have new features, you can simply update the image and then ship this new feature to the cube and then to our customers. And so building our own hardware, we, can, we have built a platform that we can use in the future for every hour feature that we will build. So for example, if the cube is installed in the local network of our clients, we can think to use it for a cache layer for our APIs. We have clients that have 20 devices in the local network that make the same API request to our backend because it's a web-based application. So we can put the cube in the middle and use it as a proxy or as a cache layer. Uh, we can use it as a printer manager. We have a checkout system solution, and so we can uh, use the cube to better handle the print of the receipt or uh, of the receipt, uh, the fiscal receipts. We can use it at an access point. We have a Wi-Fi module on that board, and so we can share the Wi-Fi and make the customers of our clients uh, use the Wi-Fi using the Walla account. So you can identify because um, often when the customers of our clients ask for the Wi-Fi password, our clients give the password of the local network of the, where the device, where there is the device, where there is the printer. Uh, they, they, handle, they handle the... Um, security topic like this. They simply share the same password that he use. So we can give a little bit of security to our clients. Next step, of course, is to, we have clients that don't have a fixed telephone, but have a mobile phone. And then we, we can build a custom module that detect the incoming calls from the mobile that comes to the mobile. And so even someone that have all, they only have the mobile phone can use this feature. OK. We have a tech blog that is uh, walla.io. Uh, if you want to read more about uh, 
how the cube is built or um, is I think is a, a backend and system administration oriented as a blog. We have uh, open source on github.com uh, slash Walla. We have a React.js project and um, is a more front-end oriented, I think. And then if you want to get in touch, we have a LinkedIn page. So please connect to see how we work. And we need, we also need new developer to build all the things that we want to build on the cube and on our application. So please, if you want, apply, please. Thank you.